just in the mood to go to Barnes & Noble and do some book shopping and have some coffee and a little treat because it is raining and cold and just like the perfect cozy read a book weather but I have no books. <laughs> I read all of my books that I had on my trip to Spain that I put on my Kindle and then I bought more books in Spain and then I finished them. So I have no books. I'm ready to work through my 2024 TBR. So I'm here at Barnes and Noble. I always get super nervous filming in public places. So this is gonna be interesting. I tried to come as close to opening as I could. It opened at 10, it's 10.30, but we'll just see. I'm so excited. So let's just, let's just go in. method of shopping is carrying them around um, and thinking about it while I look at other books. This Barnes & Noble is not my childhood one. I'm currently in my hometown for a little bit before I go back to work and <laughs> it's so much better than my childhood one. Hey, you know, on my TBR that I really want to read I can't find it like I don't think they have any in stock I'm gonna ask and then this one five survive by Holly Jackson great author why is it in hardback I'm a paperback girl so we're gonna go ask about that <laughs> that trip a success um i got three books and two of them were buy one get one half off so i only spent about 40 bucks which is a lot better than i thought it was gonna be but i still want to go to target and look at their book section so that's where we're gonna go next to continue the little book shopping
again, friends. I walked out empty-handed. I decided that I'm just gonna get Five Survive on Kindle because it was also in hardback here and I just, I just don't like hardbacks. So I'm just gonna do that on Kindle. I'll still read it, like I'm really excited to read it, but I only have the books from Barnes & Noble, which is good. I'm restraining myself. <laughs> I'm not going crazy, so that's good. We're gonna go home and I'm gonna show you guys what I got. I'm back home with my haul. I wanna show you guys, I'm gonna show you guys what I got. First thing that I got is not a book, but it's the cutest little card ever. It says we're all in this together. And it's like a bunch of really cute little blobs. This was in the like dollar card section, which I've never seen before in a Barnes and Noble, but I'm just gonna like pin this to my wall. Isn't this so cute? I love it. It's like a cute little graphics. And then I ended up getting three books from my 2024 TBR. These were at the top of my list. And so I'm really excited to read them. And I think four books is like my max of like what is in the queue. Um, I'm not someone who buys like a bunch of books at once to read. That's just not, not how it kind of stresses me out. I think like three to four is like a good number for me. But yeah, so these are the three that I got. Two of them were buy one, get one half off. So I got one a little bit cheaper than normal, which is really nice. This Barnes and Noble is having a fiction sale, which is like perfect. Cause that's what I've been really into lately. So the first one that I have here is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Um, I loved Carval that Stephanie Garber wrote. When I saw this in someone's best of 2023 books video, I was like, okay, I want to read that. I'm excited about this one and I just love the cover. It's just so pretty. And then everybody has been yelling, screaming at me to read this book. This is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. It's like the epitome of dark academia, which isn't necessarily what I like. So we will see, but apparently it's really, really good. Lastly, this book, um, was not on the shelf and I was really sad about it, but then I asked someone for help and they got it for me. And that's The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I just finished the Inheritance Games series and I really loved her writing. I really loved that series. So I thought, hey, I'll give The Naturals a try. Everyone says this one is really, really good. I love mystery, thriller, YA kind of stuff. That's usually what I gravitate towards. Now. I'm currently in the middle of book two of Throne of Glass series, Crown of Midnight, I think it is. It's a real, like, it's, it's a painstakingly hard read. I think I'm not gonna read the rest of the Throne of Glass series. I'm, I don't think I'm like entirely vibing with it, which is kind of sad. It's fine, it's not for me, even though it's super popular, it's not for me. But I'm gonna talk about that, I think, in my 2023 wrap up of all the books that I've read, but I wanna finish Crown of Midnight, I think it is. I wanna finish that before I film that video because I wanna have cohesive thoughts about the first two books of the series. But anyway, um, I did wanna do a little chat about the two books that I bought in Spain and read because they're really good and I wanna talk about them. So I'm gonna go grab them real quick because I need to get my thoughts out of my brain in like our downtime at night before we go to bed. I was reading, I was doing that <laughs> pretty much in all of our downtime. We had a lot of train rides, plane rides, all that kind of stuff. So I was reading a ton and I bought five books to read on the trip and I still read through all of them before the trip ended. So in Barcelona, we were staying in a hotel that was like right next to this really cute bookstore called La Central. Of course, I had to go inside and I got some little gifties for my friends. And then I also got some books, but these are the two books that I, I bought, The Midnight Library and The Premonition. I'm gonna talk about The Premonition first because this one I finished in like, an hour on the plane because it's only like a yeah it's like less than 150 pages so it's a really quick read first thing i have to say about this book is that it's tragic not necessarily sad it's just tragic um we follow a main character who kind of like unravels some things about her life and you quickly get connected to the main character and her aunt. It was really good. It was tragic because of what happened, but this is like a, I want to sit down and read a book in an hour and I want to feel deeply connected to a fictional character. 
this is this is what I mean. I gave this book four and a half stars because I feel like it wasn't long enough. That is the only reason why it's not five stars. I think if this was 200 pages and we got to flush out a few more things, I think I'd be more satisfied with it, but I loved this book. Reminds me of a lot of Orbiting Jupiter, which is in my top five favorite books of all time. Orbiting Jupiter is such a tragic and sad book, but it is a beautifully written narrative about this young boy and you kind of follow his, his life. And it's just like, it's a masterpiece. And the text is really big and it's only like a hundred pages. I was crying by the end of it. It like made an impact on my life. And this kind of reminds me of that, the short read, deep connection to characters. It's not quite as tragic as Orbiting Jupiter, but it is so good. I might read more books from this author because it's so good. Okay, after that ramble on the premonition, this is The Midnight Library written by Matt Haig. Also kind of tragic. Um, <laughs> I bought some really sad books to read on a plane and I did not even realize it. But I also finished this on the plane slash last night when I was reading before bed. So I read it in like two sittings. Basically the concept of this, and you've probably heard of this book, it's a parallel universe book. So it's like she comes to this midnight library when she dies, dies-ish, and she's given the chance to go into different lives based on different decisions that she made or decisions that she did not make. And so you can kind of see the different lives that she would have had if she made different decisions. Amazing concept of a book. Like, that's really cool. But it is just tragic. It is just like, <laughs> um, when I started this book, I was like, oh my gosh, can I even like finish this? Because it's so intense. It's deeply relatable, honestly. As someone who has gone through quite a bit of the depressive episodes and <laughs> thought presses, processes that this main character Nora has. I was like, oh my gosh, am I gonna have to put this down? But it was actually really beautiful. What I got from this book was that you choose to be happy and you can't live and like overwhelm yourself with regret or like things that you wish you would have done because I mean, you would just be miserable. I think that you should just continually every day just choose to be happy which is so hard to do <laughs> when you're that sad and just like hopeless. But what I liked about this book as well is they didn't use numbers of chapters. He used just like fun, I mean, not fun titles, but like this one is called Regret Overload and it was just a chapter. It wasn't like a number or anything. Like this one's called System Error. I just thought that was kind of fun. I think I gave this four and a half out of five, four or four and a half out of five. Um, it's not a perfect book. I think there was some monotony in it and there are some like really sensitive topics that I talked about this, like a lot of depression, hopelessness, suicide, stuff like that. Not that that stuff is like something you shouldn't read, but it's also like hard to recommend a kind of book like that to everyone. Like five stars in my opinion is Anybody can read this, anybody can enjoy this. It's an amazing book. So I um, I give it four and a half out of five just because of that, because I wouldn't recommend it to absolutely everyone. That's my personal rating. If you have a problem with it, too bad. So yeah, those are the two books that I bought and read in Spain. And I'm excited to go through this TBR. I need to buy Five Survive on my Kindle. That's my little update. Hey guys, real quick. Um, because this video is very book themed, I wanted to show you the digital reading journal, bookshelf kind of thing that I have and that I created. I really love it. So just wanted to show you guys in case you need some inspiration. This is my TBR and with all the book covers that I want to read. I think it's so fun to be able to see the covers and not just like words on a page. And then I have currently reading, which I'm finishing up Crown of Midnight. And then I have my bookshelf of the reads that I've done with ratings and a little bit of very small um, review underneath. Um, just helps me collect all my thoughts and to have it tangible. So if somebody asks about it, I can reference it. But I've already read three books this year, which is awesome. And then this is from 2023. These are all the books that I read. Um, starting in like June. Most of them are from 
December, <laughs> which is funny. But I graduated and I had time on my hands, okay? So I read a lot of books. I am going to take some of these books from my TBR and put them on my currently reading. Um, yeah, so let's do that. 